What's up, makers? April Dunham here. This video is all about Markdown. I'll explain what it is, how you use it, and why you should care after this. So let's start with the basics here. What exactly is Markdown? Well, at its core, it's just a syntax or set of rules that allows us to format text for a web page. It belongs to a family of what we call markup languages. You might have heard of some of them. There's XML, SGML, and HTML. HTML is commonly used to format websites. So this is all great, but you're probably wondering, why would I care about Markdown and where would I need to use it? Well, Markdown is really popular and used in a lot of different websites. You might have actually already used Markdown without knowing it. For example, WhatsApp and Slack use that natively for their message editing. Markdown is also commonly used in Reddit, Stack Overflow, and GitHub. And for my power platform makers out there, the reason you need to care about Markdown and know what it is and how to use it is because we can use Markdown inside of Power Automate to format our adaptive cards and to format our approval flow messages. All right, so now that you understand what Markdown is and where and why you might want to use it, let's take a look at how it works. The website that you're seeing on the screen here is going to show you everything that you need to know about Markdown and the syntax. Before we dive into the details on this, I do want to touch on what the difference is between Markdown and HTML. So the people that created Markdown were very clear about it. Markdown was created for one purpose, to be used as a writing syntax for the web. This isn't going to be a replacement for HTML. The syntax or what we can do with Markdown is very narrow in scope in terms of the breadth of what we can do with HTML. Oftentimes you might see Markdown and HTML being used in tandem. And how they describe it here is HTML is a publishing format, whereas Markdown is a writing format. So whereas HTML can do much more, Markdown is best for addressing issues and formatting of plain text type scenarios. But again, you can use them in combination. So any situation where there's not a corresponding Markdown syntax, you can use HTML in that case. Now with all that out of the way, back to the site here. This is going to tell you everything you need to know about different things you might want to format and what the syntax will be in Markdown. So if you know you're wanting to do some headers in your web formatting, you can click on this header section here and it'll show you exactly what you need to do. Now with Markdown, you're going to use special characters to designate the formatting. So for headers, for example, you'll use the hashtag. And with headers, you know you can have different headers from one to six. So to designate that within Markdown, you'll use a single hashtag for an H1 two hashtags for an H2, three for an H3, and so on and so forth. Lists here are another common element you might want to style. So with Markdown, you can create a list with three different characters. You can do that with an asterisk, with a plus symbol, or with a hyphen. For ordered lists, you can simply use a number period format like we're seeing here. I'm not going to go over all the details because that's all referenced here on this website for you to look up later on. But what I do want to do is show an example of a document, the same text, how it would look like in HTML versus how it would look like in Markdown. To show this off, I'm going to go to my favorite text editor of choice, which is Visual Studio Code. And what I have pulled up here first is an example of a simple HTML document. Now, hopefully you'll see here what the big difference is in the advantage of Markdown over HTML in this case. So if I were to just pull up this HTML file and try to read it, we can see it's really hard to read. We have all these different tags like a body and divs and for headers, we have to have these H1 tags. So it can be really difficult to read. Now this same text is formatted in Markdown like this. And this really highlights the big benefit of Markdown. You can open up a raw Markdown file and read it easily, whereas you can't really do that with HTML. And we're just using the simple Markdown syntax here. So for this tools, we want that to be a header. So we're just using our hashtag symbol for that. Another thing you'll notice is for hyperlinks, all we're going to do is in an open bracket, we'll put the name that you want to show for the hyperlink. And then beside that in parentheses, we'll put the actual hyperlink. 
Now we have a general understanding of this. Let's take a look at applications that we can use this markdown language in. Now a big one is GitHub. GitHub is commonly used to share code, and we use that even here in the Power Platform community as well to share our applications and our flows and the solutions that we built. With GitHub, we have these things called readme files that we can share that explains a little bit about the code that we're sharing. You might have some installation instructions, for example. I use this commonly in the solutions that I share on my YouTube channel here. So if you open up this solution that I have on my GitHub, this right here is an example of a readme file that's built with Markdown. So I can actually edit this directly in GitHub by clicking this pencil, and that converts this over to a text editor with all of that in Markdown format. So rather than having to know HTML to get this information out here on this page within GitHub, I can just make quick edits here in Markdown. We have our two hashtags, so those are H2 tags for this template and instructions. We have a hyperlink here, and I'm just using numbers and periods for a ordered list. So let's see how to make a simple change here directly in GitHub with Markdown. I'll go ahead and make a horizontal line after the template information and before the instructions. So I will just reference our Markdown guide here, and we'll see that we can do horizontal lines a few ways. It looks like three asterisks will do one, so I'll just copy this and I'll paste that right here on line seven, and we'll commit this, and there you go. We have a line now separating out the instructions from the rest of the information. All right, so the next scenario I wanna show for Markdown is for all of my Power Platform people out there. I know I can't be the only one that's faced this and needed to find a workaround. You're creating a flow in Power Automate, and you need an approval. You go to type in the details, Maybe you want to put a hyperlink or a list of items, whatever it might be. You fill that out and you quickly realize there's no way to format that text. It all comes across in one big string. Well, this is a problem that Markdown can solve. So with these approvals built in in Power Automate, we don't have the same ability that we do, say, with a send an email action. In our send an email action, we have this little toggle where we can go to code view and we can embed HTML in there so that we can send these nice formatted emails. Approvals don't have that, so we have to use Markdown to get that same level of formatting. So one tip that I do have for this is the built-in editor here isn't the best to work with, so I always write out what I need to put in here in something like VS Code, and then I'll just paste it in here into the details field. So I might just modify this markdown file and say we'll put in maybe an unordered list. So I'll do a, an H2, so I'll do our two hashtags, and I'll say see details here. So we might have things like due date, requester, item ID, things like that. So just a simple formatted message here. So let me copy this, and we'll paste that into our details. And then once you have that, you can fill in information from your flow. So I could use this dynamic content window and pull in some of this into my markup. So again, just a very simple approval, but let's save and test this and see what the email we get looks like with our markdown applied. All right, so we open up the approval email. Now we have our headers and we have our unordered list. The same concept applies to adaptive cards. So if you're using the adaptive card action within Power Automate, you can apply the same formatting in your adaptive cards to get this nice level of formatting as well. Just a few more helpful things that I wanted to show you here when it comes to working with Markdown. So say there's a scenario where maybe you have a Word document that's already formatted like you need it, but you need to convert that to Markdown so that you can add that to GitHub or Reddit or in a Power Automate flow, whatever it might be. There's a free tool here that we show in our Sharing is Caring calls that will convert a Word document into Markdown for you. All you have to do is upload your Word file and click Convert. And this also works for Google Docs as well, not just Word documents. And the other tool that I wanted to share with you is a online converter that will take your HTML and convert that to Markdown for you. So we could paste in this HTML example that we were looking at earlier, click Convert, and it automatically takes that and translates it into Markdown. All right, that's all that I had for you here. Hopefully this gave you a good introduction to Markdown and gave you some ideas of where you could start using it. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you in the next video.